Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's math channel, and this is question number five from the textbook, the International A Level Pure Mathematics One textbook from Pearson's at Excel, from chapter six, exercise 6e on page 121. And this question here is about uh, bearings. It says two radar stations A and B are 16 kilometers apart, and A is due north of B. A ship is known to be on a bearing of 150 degrees from A and 10 kilometers from B. Show that this information gives two positions for the ship and calculate the distance between these two positions. Okay, so first of all, we've got point A and point B, which are 16 kilometers apart. So I'm going to make a diagram and I'm going to have point B and point A. Now A is north of B, so B is going to be somewhere down here. And A is going to be due north of B. So I'm going to draw a line straight up from B to A. Okay, so let me stop somewhere over there. So this is where, where we're going to get A. And this is where we have B. That's 16 kilometers between them. It says, <coughs> a ship is known to be on a bearing of 150 degrees from A. Okay, so it's 150 degrees bearing from A. So after the word from is where you draw the north line. So we're going to draw a north line on A. And that north line is going to point straight up, of course. It's a north line pointing straight up. So that's the north line at A. And from there, we will measure the bearing. Okay, let me just get rid of this thing here. Okay, so if it's from A, we have to measure the bearing. Now, bearings are always measured from the north line and always measured in the clockwise direction. So from the north line in the clockwise direction, and you have to turn through here 150 degrees. So it's from here, you're going to go around, that's 90 degrees. If it went all the way there, it would be 180 degrees. So somewhere between them. Now we don't have to make an accurate sketch, so something like this would work. So somewhere between them is going to be where you have 150 degrees, somewhere like that, let's say. Okay, so this is the line along which the ship would be traveling. Now, what they've told us here is that the ship is exactly 10 kilometers from B. So from B to the ship would be 10 kilometers. So let's say that this line is, say, 10 kilometers. There's going to be another line, which is also 10 kilometers, where the ship could also be. Okay? So it could be 10 kilometers. So let's call this S1, the first position the ship could be at, and S2, the next position the ship could be at. That's 10 kilometers, as is this 10 kilometers. And this bearing, as we said, is 150 degrees. So these are the two possible positions of the ship. Okay, so show that, that information gives two positions for the ship and calculate the distance between these two positions. So we need to find the distance between these two positions. So that's what we need to find here, the distance between them. So. Okay, that's what we have to find. The distance between S1 and S2. That's what we're looking for. And we're going to call this distance X. I'm going to call this distance X, the distance between S1 and S2. All right, so that's what we have to find. Now, to find this, we need to know some more information. Now, we have these two sides. Okay, we can consider this like an isosceles triangle. We know what these two sides are. Um, we don't have any other information about this situation. But we have a triangle here, ABS1. From that triangle, we know this angle is 30 degrees because this is a north line. This is due north, this is the north line. These two angles add up to 180. So this angle must be 30 degrees. Okay, so we have this angle. We also have this side. Um, and we have, you know, so we have this angle and the side opposite the angle. We have this side. We can use that side to find what this angle is here. So let me call this angle theta. Okay, if we find this angle theta, we can then find this angle. Okay, if we find this angle, let's say, let's call it alpha, we found also this angle because these are the base angles in, a, in, a equilateral, sorry, in, a, in an isosceles triangle, the base angles are the same. So this angle and this angle are equal to each other. If I have these two angles, I can find the angle over here because they add up to 180, these three, and therefore I can find what x is. Okay, using um, the sine rule or using the cosine or whatever. So basically, um, as if I can find the angle over here, that will help me to solve the problem. All right, so now, <clears throat> we know that this angle over here 
um, can be found by using the sign rule because we have one pair of opposites and another pair with this angle is the only thing that we don't know. So what we can say is, if we consider the angle ABS1, ABS1, that's the triangle ABS1, we can say that the sine of the angle that I've called theta over the side opposite it, which is 16, is equal to the sine of the angle 30, which we know, divided by the, 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 the side opposite it, which is 10. So we can say that sine of theta is 16 times sine of 30 divided by 10. So I can find theta by taking the inverse sine of all of this. So I need to take out the calculator. Okay, so here's the calculator. Make sure that it's in degree mode. I think it's in radian mode right now. So we press shift, menu, and angle unit and change it to degree mode. So it's in degree mode. Just make sure it's in degree mode. So we can say the angle we need is going to be the inverse sine of all of this. So we press shift and the sine button. I'm going to have 16 sine 30 divided by 10. And that gives us 53.1 degrees, 53.13 degrees. Now, this is where we have to be really, really careful. Okay? So this is 53.1, what was it? 53.1 degrees. 53.13, I'll write it to a few more decimal places that needed, okay? Um, but I'll keep the answer in my calculator in case we, we're going to use it again. Of course, we're going to use it again. So that's the angle theta. Now, this, is it really the angle theta? This angle is obtuse. We can see that very clearly. This is the obtuse angle, and this here, this would be an acute angle over here. So we know for sure this angle can't be 53.1. And that's what you've got to be careful about in such a question when we are using the sine rule. For the sine rule can either give us, uh, a sine rule could be for an angle which is obtuse or acute, but the calculator would only ever give us the angle which is um, acute. So this angle here, this angle on this side here, alpha, okay, which is the angle we're trying to find actually, right, this angle okay, can be found and you get exactly the same ratio. The sine of alpha over 16 is equal to the sine of 30 over 10. But this angle is ob acute and this angle is obtuse. So the angle we found is actually this angle over here. This is not actually alpha, this is actually, this is not actually theta, this is alpha. Okay, because to find the other angle, when the calculator will only give us the acute angle, which shares the same sine ratio, we have to do 180 minus the angle found. So as we know, the sine curve between 0 and 180 looks like this. It continues like that for up to 360. But if this is the angle that the calculator gave, which is 53.1, then there's another angle which shares the same sine ratio as it, which is over here, which is 180 minus 53.1. So the angle theta actually is 180 minus 53.13. OK? That's the angle theta. But we don't actually need this angle theta because we need to find what alpha is. All right, we need to find this angle here. All right, so this alpha is the angle that we actually need. So we don't do 180 minus this, okay, because we need the angle, which is 53.1. All right, so that's a very important point. All right, I found, I was trying to find this angle using the sine rule. The calculator gave me the angle that shares the same sine ratio as this, but is acute. It only gives me the acute one. So if I was actually wanting this angle, I would do 180 minus the angle the calculator gave us. But I'm actually looking for the angle here, which is the acute one, which is what the calculator gave us, this 53.1. So I can use these two angles right, to help us find what x is, but I need to have the angle over here. Let's call this angle, um, let's call it y. So I know that y is equal to 180 minus these two angles, 2 times 53. 0.13. So that's going to give us, if we take the, the calculate answer, and we do 180 minus 2 times the last answer, and that gives us 73.739, 73.74, let's say, 73.74, 73.74, okay, that's 
the angle over here. So we need to find um, this distance. So we can say that x over the sine of the angle y, which we found just now, is equal to, we can use any of these two, 10 over the sine of 53.13 degrees. Okay, so we can say that x is equal to 10 times the sine of 73.74 over the sine of 53.13. And that will give us our answer that we're looking for. So we're going to have 10 times the sine. Let me put this back up here. 10 times the sine of our last answer, which was the angle there, divided by the sine of 53. 0.13. Okay, and that, that should give us the, the length that we need, x, which gives us 12.00001. So it's going to be basically 12. You could, could say that would be 12 exactly, probably because we use the rounded value for this angle. So it's 12.000 whatever. So we can say 12.0 to 3SF if you want. I'm guessing it would have been an exact value if we used this angle in this exact form. So that's 12 kilometers, which is the distance between the two ships. Okay, is it in kilometers? Yes. Okay, that's the distance between the two ships. So the important point in this question is when you tried to find this angle, it gave you an acute angle. And this we know is obtuse. And the angle we're looking for is 180 minus the angle. Okay, so basically the angle we're looking for is the angle. The angle in here, right, we don't have to do 180 minus 53.1 because it will give us this angle. We just keep it as 53.1 because this is the angle we're looking for, the acute one. Okay, the acute angle that adds up with this to, um, you know, to 180 degrees. All right, so there we have the answer to this question, number five. All right, important question. A lot of students would have taken the angle found here and did 180 minus that, and then they would have found this angle is like, you know, something like 120 uh, something, 127 degrees, and then when they try to add these two angles together and subtract for 180, they'll end up with an angle which is negative because they add up to 180, so you'd have to realize, hold on, this angle can't be a, you know, a, an, an angle which is 53.1, that will make this angle an obtuse angle. And then you'll have two obtuse angles, which is not possible in a triangle, okay? So that's why it's very important that you understand this thing when you use the sine rule, the calculator gives you always the acute angle, sometimes you're looking for the obtuse angle. Okay, so this is an obtuse angle, and this is the acute angle. This is the angle, which is 53.1, not the angle here. Okay, and then you can solve the problem. Okay, so I hope that was clear. Um, other questions from the book, chapter 6, um, you'll find in the playlist that will appear somewhere in this area. Other questions from this topic of trig ratios in general from P1, you can find in this playlist that should appear somewhere over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.